week's last edition of Targets in Focus, I'm joined by a familiar voice on Dukas Copy TV, currency strategist Vasily Serebryakov from Wells Fargo based in New York. Vasily, euro dollar seems to have broken through the bottom of its trading range. Recent euro weakness has been sparked by Greek fears and Spanish woes. Now, combined with weak economic prospects in the euro area and jitters concerning U.S. growth, in your opinion, what's in store for the euro dollar over the coming 12 months? Well, I think it's been remarkable uh, to the extent that the euro has managed uh, to hold up uh, even despite all the negative news, um, although now it looks like politics rather than economics is causing a break lower um, in terms of the recent euro trading range. In our view, um, this is probably a beginning of, of a more sustained move lower. And uh, really, when we look at the um, state of the uh, eurozone economy, uh, it remains in the, clearly in a very challenging spot. And given the fact that the uh, Debt market tensions have also re-escalated in recent weeks. We believe there's a fair chance for further European Central Bank policy easing down the road. Uh, we also don't believe that uh, the Federal Reserve will be easing policy further this year. U.S. growth has not been particularly impressive, but it, we think it's strong enough to keep the Fed on the sidelines, and that uh, removes uh, a potential negative for the U.S. dollar. This was sum up in terms of our currency forecast, we're looking for a gradual slide in the in the euro towards the uh, mid-120s and, and to 122 um, over the next 12 months. What about the euro against the Canadian dollar? I understand you hold quite a bearish stance on this pair in your mid to long term outlook. Yeah, this is uh, probably one of our preferred pairs or, or, or one of our uh, kind of preferred ways to express our uh, bearishness on the euro, but at the same time our bullishness on the Canadian dollar. We've already talked about the, the European negatives, uh, but let's talk about the Canadian positives. And we've seen the economy hold up uh, fairly well, uh, and, and the recent jobs numbers were stronger than expected. Most importantly, the Bank of Canada at its last policy meeting has sent a signal that it may be tightening policy even before the end of the year. Um, of course, that timing remains uncertain and I think to some extent dependent on the evolution of the global financial markets. But nevertheless, we, we still see the Bank of Canada as leading uh, the G10 uh, policy tightening and that should provide uh, some significant support to the Canadian dollar as well. In terms of uh, EuroCAD cross, we, we're, we're looking at, again, at, at recent support levels of uh, just around uh, 2850-29 level. Uh, we believe those will be challenged in the coming months, and we do see a more substantial slide um, in that particular cross to 115 uh, over the next 12 months. And finally, moving on to pound yen, both currencies are showing quite impressive strength against the US dollar at the moment, despite the strength of the US dollar against other major pairs. Now, for now, pound yen is showing support at around the 128 level. But what are your projections for this pair over the next year or so? Some strength in both of those currencies, and I think it's 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 a fair reflection of of the recent moves. Uh, in our view, and looking at some of the uh, fundamental factors, uh, this is still very much a race to the bottom between the uh, British pound and the Japanese yen. Both economies are are, are fairly weak, and, and and even though we've seen perhaps some improvement in the UK economic outlook recently, we still believe fair chances of further Bank of England policy easing sometime down the road. Uh, there's, of course, still chances of further Bank of Japan easing as well, especially if uh, you know deflationary pressures remain uh, fairly strong in, in Japan. Uh, and we also feel that in the short run, some of the UK positives are a little bit better priced in uh, than, than the Japanese developments. So I would say we have a kind of a dual view in the sense that short-term uh, weakness in the sterling yen cross, perhaps over the next three months, uh, just as some of those UK expectations are scaled back. Uh, longer term, uh, we, we think the UK economy will outperform. And looking especially at the long-term valuations, uh, the pound appears relatively inexpensive um, when we compare it to the Japanese yen. So this would be a cross that uh, has fairly good long-term appreciation potential in our view, but we're probably talking uh, more of a 
two to three year view than necessarily a short term view. Nevertheless, in terms of our forecast, we do see some strength of the 12 months as well. Uh, to just around this 133 level uh, in the sterling yen. Thank you very much, Vasily, for sharing some of your latest projections. Well, that's all for Targets and Focus this week, but stay tuned because coming up on Dukas Copy TV is a look at the UK economy and tomorrow a fresh press review and all the latest on Chinese inflation. For now, goodbye.